Welcome back to Bookview TV. Now we've all calmed down a bit. The air conditioning is on full blast. I dumped the rest of the espresso. We're talking this week with Ample Attraction, Plentiful Package, and Package of Paradise author Melissa Craig, who has a series of excellent selling erotica books. Now, Melissa, even though these works are primarily written from and for a women's perspective, there were sections of these books, particularly particularly some of Jenna's descriptive bits that were, shall we say, rather instructional and somewhat exciting. Now, is your writing aimed at women or is it also aimed at men? Um, I think it's aimed for both because um, I know that males read it and it's nice for them to, you know, know what a female's thinking, I suppose. And women can relate to it because they go, yes, that's, that's definitely the emotions we feel. So um, it, it, so it's both, and I do sometimes skip into the male's perspective, and, um, and but mainly the females, and yeah, no, I think it's for both. Wow, because I mean, it is, it is very interesting to, you know, to, to, to listen to, you know, some of, the, some of the material that's in there, or actually read some of the material that's in there and wonder, oh, okay, didn't know that. <laughs> do you get a lot of that sort of reaction? Yeah, exactly, it's, it's, <laughs> it's instructional. <laughs> Look, I have to ask the question, though, what's the reason outside of Australia, of course, for, for the seeming global hang up about sex and erotica? I mean, you know, there are certain faiths and paternalistic societies that women completely cover themselves to avoid arousal. Yet I wouldn't be surprised to learn that these nations are also huge consumers of erotica and pornography. Why are we so hung up on the issue of sex? I don't know. Some people um, like to talk about it. Some people don't like to talk about it. Um... And it's each to their own. They they do. You know, um, everyone, you know, has their own perspective. And um, I, I think it's been around for years, and um, and it will continue to stay that way. It's um, it's fun. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, now I have to get serious for a moment. How do you answer the concerns that? You know, your books could be misinterpreted by some who might read more into them and, and perhaps take advantage of another woman or, or, or even a man in that situation. Um, I don't think, my books don't have hardly, don't have anyone hurting anybody. I, I'm not for that at all. Um, and it's all consenting adults and I would never do anything or write anything that way. Um, so I think as long as I know I will always stick to that it's always got to be and it's not hurting people or anything like that because I don't agree with you know hurting people or uh, things like that so um, yeah I, I, some people do write that way but I don't so um, and each to their own but um, I, you know women yeah I wouldn't want that to happen so hmm. it's a, yeah you know, we, we have a very good friend of our of our worldview show, our sister program here. Her name is Caroline Criado Perez, and she's been the subject of some rather nasty rape threats on Twitter. And indeed, her, her fight back has made global headlines over the last few weeks. Uh, we know there are people who fail to recognize that any sort of a behavioral line exists, you know, particularly in our anonymous social media world. Is there a line in erotica writing and how do you deal with those who cross it, either readers or other writers? Um, yeah, there definitely is a line, and you do um, have to watch what you write on Twitter. I, um, at first, I, I was a bit blasé, and I didn't realise myself, and, you know, you would get DMs, or um, people think that you are, like you said, Jenna, in my books. And um, I, if you know me in person, I don't talk that way. I don't you know, act that way. I don't write that way. I don't even, hard, I hardly swear. And in my books, they're swearing. So um, people are always going to assume that we take on that character. Um, but, and there is a fine line and we have to watch what we say and what, what we do. Uh, even for a while there, I wasn't even following male followers because you just, you didn't know because I end up getting DMs or or, or things like that, and I did have to block some people, and um, and then they find other ways to get you and pretend they're someone else, and, um, and and so you just keep an eye out. And I have a good network of friends, and we all sort of stick together, and we say, okay, now watch out for that follower or this follower. Um, and so sometimes it's best. I know it's sad, but sometimes we have to stop following people. Um, you know, at the moment, and 
I find when we put a new, when I put a new book out, it will happen probably more. And I just make sure my tweets are um, don't do too much, or you know which questions are going to to lead to something else. So you just have to word it correctly, um, and, or just don't answer those DMs, or, or don't answer even the tweets. It must be extraordinarily difficult for someone in, you know that writes you know in the in the world in which you do write. I mean, I, I, where's uh, how do you separate the 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 real inquiries from the ones that are just designed to wind you up? You know, you, you can tell which ones are. Um, it it would just you you just know. I think because yeah, that's a hard question. At first, I didn't know. I was um, very innocent and to Twitter and to, you know, a new writer and, oh, my God, someone likes my book and, and really love, they love my book. And, um, but now I know you, you sort of learn which ones to watch out for, which ones to answer and which ones to follow. I won't automatically follow back. I make sure I check them out. So um, if you follow me, <laughs> I, I won't follow you straight away unless, you know, well, I'll make sure I do follow you because I've enjoyed what you do here. You know, you talk. Yeah, I can. <laughs> you talk about your work, and and you know, while there is a certain amount of of, of flirtation and and titillation in in the writing itself, how does the private Melissa separate herself from this public persona we see, or or do you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of um, even when I first said that I was writing erotica, everyone went, "What?" you <laughs> um, I'm like I oh, know I've never read an erotica fur I seriously never read an erotica before I wrote one um, and I shocked everybody and the first time I wrote the F word I like cried because that's not me um, or you know just other words you you write with erotica is no way that I would say those words in everyday world um, and it was hard at first and um, but yeah, there is a there is a difference between you know Melissa Craig author and Melissa in the everyday world. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. And when we return with part three of our interview with Melissa Craig, we're going to talk about the challenges of an unknown author entering such a hotly contested. All right, that was a double entendre market. When Bookview continues, stay right here.